How we doing, Bone Ponies? It's your boys, the Three Piece Tendy, back here with a uh, game review of a game that we, uh, well, at least I thought was never going to come to fruition because uh, it seemed like every time we had planned to play it, uh, uh, things had barred us from it. But we did it, and that board game was the board game Scythe. Um, it was designed by Jamie Stigmayer. Um, there is wonderful art on throughout the whole thing. So the art and world building was, and I apologize if I botched the names, um, but the art and world building was by Jakub Rolski. Rolski. Um, amazing stuff. The game kind of takes place in a uh, post a. a a post World War One, um, as it kind of takes this weird steam power, steampunk, futuristic vibe to it. If World War One kind of ended a little differently, yeah, because like I, I think it's like World War One because like the the technology towards the end of World War One was getting just crazy, and I think that this it, it's the closest to that you know oh yeah um but obviously if if they moved on from uh tanks to uh mechs you know <laughs> yeah it's the alternate history of the 1920s um so is is kind of their their idea of it but uh before we get in any further um we, of course, have the other two pieces of attendees. You got Cody. And Steve. And uh, that's, uh, let's just take a moment here to remember the only way we can keep doing this is if you kind of help us out and support us. So that could be through Patreon. That could be going over to Drive Through RPG, looking for up for Tabletop Totality, checking out some of our pre-made adventures which we just dropped a pretty good one um so make sure you check that out uh terror in portacala yeah buddy four yeah. four adventures in that four full adventures tons of monsters everything's original um it's set in our original world of dracuva yep. and uh, it's a bunch of fun and it's for levels like two through 12 yeah so i mean what's up and we got the excellent uh matt steiker to do some uh, artwork yes. for us or the cover of our bog sleeper monster oh, it is yeah. brutal it's absolutely and i love it it's horrifying. brutal and beautiful oh, it's beautiful <laughs> brutal um so yeah definitely make sure to go go through check out our stuff leave likes leave comments leave questions you respond to us it could give us more ideas you, you talk to us little yeah. ponies oh, yeah. we listen we do mm. we'll brush you down good Yes, PJ. But let's go right into this game review because that's why we're here. So, uh, Scythe, it's really, you know, the the core game I want to say is like um, two to two to four because then with the expansion you can go five to six. Um, but it is it is your basic uh, equivalent to like Settlers of Catan mixed with Risk. Um, but there's a little bit more areas you can play around with. Um, I thoroughly enjoy this game. I'm, I've, I've played it a bunch of times. I actually own the own the game. This is my this is my game guy. Yeah, Neil yeah. Neil finally <laughs> convinced us to play it. He basically held me against my will and, and forced me to play the game. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't regret it. So. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. Yeah, I guess yeah. I guess the big pre-warning, if anybody's going to go out there and pick up this game and try and play it, be prepared. It is an undertaking. Um, yeah, I mean, you described it as, like, you used the word basic to describe it, and I would say it's anything, but there's a lot of moving parts to this game. There's a lot of different aspects to it that you need to keep in, keep track of. There's a lot of stuff that you have to take into mind when coming up with like strategies and things like that. But like once you kind of have a grasp on it, it it's very it's very daunting at first. But once you have a grasp on it, then it's like, oh, I understand what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. this is like it's it's yeah. a lot of fun once you figure out exactly how the game works and what you're supposed to do. 
and then after that it's like it, it, it all clicks kind of more or less. Yeah, no, that's, that's very true. And that's, and that's just like, they even say it in the, uh, in the aspects of the game is kind of just set it up, get everything ready. So you could, you can play and just play. And until you hit a point where you have a question about how something is or something along those lines, that's when you go and look at the rules, but they, they tell you like the first you know time you go through it, don't get bogged down. Because mm-hmm. it's just to teach you the mechanics. You know, yeah. It goes through an aspect of you get star points, which is similar if somebody plays uh, Settles of Catan, like victory points. There's six of them that you get a- rewarded for completing certain tasks. So there's things like you, each faction has four mechs. If you get all your four mechs deployed, you get a star. Um, if you send out all your villagers, things like that, we're not going to go in depth too much on the rules because again, it is an undertaking. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there on it. Um, I'm pretty sure they have their own how to play on YouTube. Um, but yeah. you can also check us. Uh, we played it. We have part one of it up right now on our yep. YouTube and we're working on part two, uh, which is finished. We did finish playing the game for Extra Life Extra Game Life. Day. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, part of part of what we did, um, we we do a monthly streams for Extra Life. So part of what we're doing is we're playing games and then we're reviewing them. So we did play Scythe. Now we're kind of giving it the review, and um, you know, it it is fun. But like Neil and Steve were both kind of saying, it does take a level of patience and yes. it does take some time. It's not a fast game, um, but it's kind of like risk and age of empires, like all at once on a board game. It's a military kind of global uh, mm. strategy game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so you're there's, with... there's just more, there's just so much more to it because you can get, or you can, you know, you have your workers, you have your, your mechs, you have a leader, you have all sorts of different resources that you need to get to accomplish your goals. Um, so it's just much more involved. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Steve is right. Once you, once we did start playing it and you had a couple of turns under our belts, we were pretty quick in making our decisions and, and, and trying to, you know, make strategies and play the game. Yeah. It's just in the beginning, it's a little daunting. Yeah, like if you've never if you've never played the game before and you're playing with somebody that has experience, uh, you should be prepared to lose because it's just very much a game where like if you don't know what you're doing, it's kind of hard to figure out like a strategy for it. Like it's, yeah, it's it's just like like you're you're not going to know what you're doing first time. And there's a lot of things to keep track of at first, so it's kind of a little bit daunting and a little bit tough to keep track of everything. And then, like, when, like once you get a little bit more experience and once you kind of remember, like, oh, yeah, this is how that mechanic works. Oh, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do here. Oh, yeah, like, I can kind of, like, figure out a strategy a little bit more quickly. Then it kind of starts to be, like, you have, like, a chance to, to do it. But, like, I would say, like, don't get discouraged if you play this game once and lose against someone that has more experience because it's just... Like you should be like if you if you're playing it the first time, it should be just to learn the mechanics of the game and like how it all works. And then like after that, like going forward, like you'll be on the you'll like the more you like it's it's like anything. The more you play it, the more experience you have, the more you'll learn and the and the yeah. better it is. And it, it really is a game that you have to like play a couple of times and really learn how to play in order to like get good at it. Well, I mean it's 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 definitely a game that if you take even a step away from um, it'll take a little bit to go back. In yeah. Because there's also an aspect of um, your str- really strategy doesn't come out until you're almost in the middle of the game. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, for sure. it's constantly changing the way that they do the mechanics of each turn. You have to do something different unless you have a special ability that says otherwise. Um, yeah. Because there's one faction that can re- repeat the same action all the time, but you're constantly doing something different. So mm-hmm. when you have, especially if it's if it's one v one, it's a little bit different in that sense. You have a little bit more control, um, at least from what I have found. You have a little bit more control over what you want to do, but. Mm-hmm. When it, you start adding more people and you start having to react to those people, your your strategy it isn't like you know chess in a way where you're gonna be like, oh nope, I want to do these are my first five moves, no matter what this person does. You, you know yeah. what I mean? In this game, the strategy is more um, 
as you're going. It's more real time. It's yeah, because more, this is yeah. what's happening. You're reacting to that now. Oh, this person's putting out these. I want to do this. Or my two my two enemies are doing these things, but nobody's doing this. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, and that's kind of because, like, at the start of the game, you get different, like, you get, they're called, like, mats, and they're basically, yeah, like, mats, yeah. they're basically, like, here's your here's your starting setup for the game, so no matter what, it's going to be different every time that you play, yep. depending on what faction you're playing as, and, like, depending on what mat you pull, so you can't even really figure out a strategy at the start, like, you, you can't go into the game, like, well, turn zero with a strategy, it's oh, like, as soon as you get that mat... You got to be like, okay, what can I do with this mat? What can I do to start? Like, get your pieces on the board, and then like a couple turns in, then you can start to formulate a strategy. Yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely reacting as it's out there because like one of the big things too is they try and keep everything randomized, so you don't pick mm-hmm. your faction. Um, yeah. That's all. That's all. Just you shuffle the factions up. You hand them out, and then you shuffle your players out, and then you hand them out. So this way, it keeps your player mat and your factions usually will never be the same each time you play. And, yeah. Um, so I, I also like that aspect. Um, one of the big things that I love about this game, and I don't know if you two know this, this is actually you can play this by yourself. This is a, a, a technically a one to to four player game because they have cards that because of the mechanics of the game, they have cards that allow you to you draw the card and it'll allow the the you know the calm per se the to make moves. So you can play this against you know pretty much the game itself. That's cool. Um, which is like, there's like that. When I first found this, there was no other game I knew that did that. There's a couple yeah. other ones now that are out there that I know of, but like this has, yeah, it has its own automated game that has multiple different, different difficulties. It Ooh. has, you know, so you can play it at different levels. So this is like one of those board games you can actually. You know, everybody always knocks board games because oh, I never have people around to play them. Well, guess what? This board game. You can play it by yourself. <laughs> and you can play it on Tabletop Simulator with your friends yeah. if you can't get them to come over to your house or you live yeah. far apart from each other. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. That's another bonus. Yeah. So it's it's got a lot of good stuff. Do you got any other thing? What was another thing you liked, Cody? Um, I liked, I, I liked yeah. how the, different, the, the factions were um, somewhat based in history, somewhat based on culture. Yep. Like there's like the Ruspiet, which is like sort of like the Soviet Union, mm-hmm. and, and I played the Nords, which are pretty much the Scandinavians. Um, but it was cool, and uh, I did enjoy the game. I wish it had gone on for a little longer, or that maybe I had understood it better when I first started. But yeah. mm-hmm. I would definitely play it again. And I oh, actually yeah. I picked it up on Tabletop Simulator, so nice. Hopefully, I can uh, start training. You know, take me out. <laughs> yeah, I felt I felt the same way when I first played it, where it was like it's so overwhelming. I wish I knew what I was doing better. And like even like when we were playing it, that was the second time I ever played it, and the first time I played it was like almost a year before. And I was like very slowly remembering how the mechanics of the game worked. And then eventually, I was like, oh yeah, that's how this works. That's how that works. Yeah. And then and then right as right as I started like being like okay, I know what to do now, then we stopped the first part and I was like, "Oh shit, I lost I lost well, my entire strategy." Yeah, so that was another yeah. hard thing which people see we kind of like as each of us got into a groove of what we were doing is when we had to stop our stream for the first half. So mm-hmm. then when we picked up the second half, all of us are like, all right, what the hell were we doing? Like, yeah, everything yeah we lost the was, momentum but like, for sure. <laughs> and then it, it took a couple more turns and then, and then we gained back momentum and it might have been the plan we had originally had. Who knows? <laughs> um, but it's kind of one of those things, you know, how, how you how it goes when we're doing yeah. these live streams. <laughs> well, that was cool too. That tabletop simulator allowed us to pause it pretty much where yeah. the board stayed the same. Yeah. Uh, so there was no, you know, there was no worried about trying to remember where everybody's pieces were or mm. how far along in the game we were. It was all right there. Yeah. And we picked it up like 
weeks later. So yeah, yeah. it was. And like yeah, and to and to bring back the comparison to Risk, it's like we got back into it after like later on, and um, like we just even if we didn't know what the strategy was that we had the first time that we were playing, it was like we were able to still come up with new strategies and and figure stuff out going forward. So it's a lot like Risk in that in that regard is that you can like drop it and then pick it up later and be like. I forgot what I was doing before, but I can come up with something now on the fly to sort of work for a little while until, yeah. you know, I can get a new strategy going. And that aspect of it is pretty cool as well. Yeah. Well, we gave it a, a quick review. Now it's now it's for the uh, the big part here. The the scoring of the game. Oh boy. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting one. Now we rank this out of bone ponies, yes. Yes. Cody, what's your first ranking? I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give Scythe a solid four out of five bone ponies. It's a pretty solid score. Because I think it's a very detailed game. It's a game you can play many, many times. Uh, it's a game mm-hmm. you can play by yourself, and I think that has some pretty good utility. And um, it was interesting, and uh, even though it was complex, once you start doing it, it, it really becomes fun. So yeah, I'll give it a four. All right, all right, Steven. I'm five out of five. Did you give me I... a five out of five, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for all the for all the reasons that Cody gave, I think that it's uh, I think it's a really fun game. I think that it's it's got a lot of complexity. It's a little bit tough to pick up, but once you pick it up, it's like you see why all those complexities are there. You can you can run with it. You can you can play you can play it. It's it's a game that I would love to play again and again because it's just like it's a fun it's just a fun game. Yeah, and that's all you can really ask for at the end of the day. It's like once you once you know what you're doing, it's a fun game, and yeah. that's 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 it. Gotcha. Can't, can't really ask for more than that. That's that's fair. And uh I'm going to I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. This is going to be my first uh 5 out of 5 well, rating. Let me read out of the water there, boys. Um, Shocking everyone, Neil, the person that's wanted to play well, yeah, for over I a year. Is going to give it a 5 out of 5. Right. Um, I thought me putting a 4 um, in was good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> no, I'm giving it enough. that I'm going to give it that five out of five bone ponies. And the base reason is um, a lot of people may hate on it because it is a complex board game. A lot of people don't enjoy complex board games because they want something quick. They don't want to have to deal with it. Nah, I'm in there to put the work in and Scythe rewards you once you put that work in. Once you figure out that game, it will be a a great board game for you to play. You'll yeah, be just... able to go back to it. It'll always be a little bit different. You'll always, you know, there's multiple different changes in how scoring can happen. Um, I just think it's a little bit more of a uh, fluid strategy game, which I'm all about my strategy games. And that's why, that's why I'm going to give it that five out of five. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So all together, we had a four, a five, and a five. That gives us a four point six repeating. We'll just round that up to a four point seven, I guess. Uh, four point seven bone ponies. Is that our highest ranked uh, game? This at the is moment? so far, I believe, our highest ranked game. Because I don't think have we given out. I don't even think we've given out any fives previously. I have not given out any fives. I haven't either. So. Take it here, folks. Scythe received our first five bone ponies. Actually, a two scoring. It's not even. It's not even a single scoring of five bone ponies. Two of us, two of the three tendies. I was like, yeah, this game's a five. So I'd say go down to your local game store. I was like the one Olympic judge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give it a one. Yeah, <laughs> gotta, gotta be low. Um, yeah, you're Simon Cowell. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Um, 
I will say on another note, it is a little bit pricey of a game. It is a big game. I mean, the box is huge. It's got a lot of pieces. Um, the board is gorgeous. They actually sell a second version of the board that is, like, fucking massive, um, which is pretty awesome. But it is a little bit pricey. But if you're looking to do it on a discount, you also don't have your friends around, go pick up Tabletop Simulator each year. It's, like... 20 bucks just for that on steam and then you can get uh you can get scythe i think it's like almost 10 bucks or something like that i think i think i only paid 10 bucks for yeah. it yeah yeah so and boom you have it where if you buy the board game i think it was like something like uh 60 to 80 bucks um so we it is, will it's a price we will but... link everything in the corral below exactly indeed Exactly. But other than that, I think that's it for us in our game rating and review of Scythe. Make sure if this interests you enough, Scythe. go on over to our live play on it. We'll be having part two up here pretty sh- soon. Um, other than that, if you are just like, hey, I heard you talking about that adventure, Terra and Portacala from beginning, make sure you go over to Drive Through RPG. And then stay Did you tuned. say cool adventures? Yeah. <laughs> all of them over there. There's a bunch of free ones. There's a couple that you have to pay for if you want them. They're all worth it. Um, and mm-hmm. then make sure you keep your uh, eyes and ears open. Coming in uh, January, we got something magical for you. You'll hear, you'll hear some stuff about it. Yeah, if you want to brewing for a while. Yeah, if you want to hear us talk about that a little bit more in the future, make sure that you like and subscribe and comment below and let us know if you've played scythe and tell us what you thought about it Mm -hmm. other than that bone ponies i think it's time to go back to the stables and get some feed and uh brush them down brush them down thank you everybody for coming in see you later bye bye bye